I should be helping my kids, not them helping me. I'm a widow, and so my kids are all gone, working full time, and a single income, and this double income economy we're now living in just wasn't cutting it. We created what I call the Book Nook Inn because there's an actual nook under the stairs that's got a, a built-in bookshelf with books on it and each room is a themed room uh, based on the title of a book. So we started uh, doing Airbnb in November of 2014 and it was maybe uh, six months into it that we got you know, cease and desist letters from the from our city. The code enforcement officer said, I was in your neighborhood and observed a code violation on the property. What, what are they gonna see? They're gonna see a, a, a car with a, an out-of-state license plate on it, in which case, how do you know that's not family? They are threatening me with a, a, a class B misdemeanor and liens on my property without ever actually having proof that I am in violation of any code whatsoever. I'm a stay-at-home mom and I think that one of the reasons we leverage the house is just because it's a way to bring in some extra income. It's just it's just a totally different experience that you just cannot duplicate in a hotel and that's and people want that. One of the things that I really enjoyed about doing this is getting to meet people from all over. It, it's been really nice to have company and have people to talk to. And that's another aspect of it for me, is that I'm not alone every single night. The, the mayor, who's two doors down, never had a clue. We talked to him about this after we said, did, we, did you ever know we were doing this? No. Has it ever bothered you? No. Is it affecting your property values? No. Straight from the mayor's mouth. So there, there was nothing that we were ever doing that was doing anything to affect neighbors. I think there's a, a fear that, you know, there's going to be wild parties and hordes of people coming in and disrupting a neighborhood. but. But you know, uh, my six kids were probably rowdier than the guests that I've had have ever been. Party houses are legitimately a problem, but number one, you already have existing ordinances on the books to deal with those problems. You have garbage, you have parking, you have noise. Those are all ordinances on the books. Just enforce those, those violations. Every single issue that anybody could complain about with a party house, we agree with you times 10, and we are the built-in enforcers of preventing those things from happening because we live in the house. The income that I made just this last month from renting space, temporary space to travelers, allowed me to pay my bills by myself for the first time in over three years. And that felt good. All I've ever wanted is to be able to take care of myself, be a contributing member of society, and, and help out others as I can. You know, I have the right to have a family in my home. I have the right to have guests in my home. What changes when there is a value given for that? What, what changes there? I'm not living in an HOA, I'm not paying somebody to manage this locale. So how can you possibly tell me what I can and can't do with my property when I'm not violating anybody's inalienable rights? It was really interesting to me when I told the kids that we're not doing Airbnb anymore. They couldn't wrap their brains around somebody telling us what we could do with our house. It made absolutely no sense to my children that the state, the city could come in and tell us what we can and can't do with our house. They were just baffled by it. It was another testament to me of how wrong it is when kids get it. I just really think I should have the right to, to use my property in, in that manner, as long as I'm not infringing on the rights of others that are already regulated with the law. I derive my rights to, to use my property as I see fit from God called inalienable rights. Where do you derive, where's the source of you getting the right to tell me what I can and can't do with my property? Just because something's a law doesn't mean that it's right.